Hey, it's Dan. And Georgina. We're here for another episode of our podcast. The last one of 2020. And cheers to that. Yeah. Mmm. Dan, what are you drinking today? I have a Land Grant IPA. It does, does it say Lifty? Lifty. It's called Lifty. Oh, it's Southern because like, if you take a beer on a uh, ski lift, it's called a Lifty. Hmm. Well, we're going to have to ski in Ohio, because <laughs> I don't think that's allowed in Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> it's never allowed. It's just what you, what you do sometimes. Oh, I guess the cool kids. <laughs> um, tell, and tell everyone about Land Grant. Yeah, yes, sorry. Land Grant is one of our favorite breweries uh, in the area. So Yeah, it's really close by. Um, Pre-numbers getting really, really bad, we were able to... Um, sit outside, picnic benches very far apart, um, everyone had masks, uh, everything was always scrubbed down. It was a really wonderful experience and there was even a band playing outside kind of from afar um, on a stage so I really liked it there. Can't wait to start going back. <laughs> yeah. Frida's having a drink of water right now too if you hear that. <laughs> Land Grant, Brita Water and <laughs> A French 75. Um, we just finished up our last shoot of 2020. Um, and, you know, it was with Boston.com. Um, they have a wonderful cocktail club. Um, and part of the ticket proceeds go towards a great organization in Boston um, that supports both uh, people that work in the restaurant industry, but also families in need. So. Um, I'll be dropping the link, or Dan will be, <laughs> in uh, in the caption, YouTube, all that. Um, so if you'd like to buy some tickets, I'll be there. Um, I'll probably rope Dan into it, um, just to enjoy creating some craft cocktails with some of Boston's best bartenders. <laughs> it's going to be a fun thing to do on New Year's Eve. It really is, yeah. I mean, your home we're all home hopefully um and it is something fun for us all to do together um delicious i do love a french 75 i like that they started with that um but i do have a little bit of insight into what's next and there are some goodies to come um one of the bartenders is jackson from eastern standard eastern standard was one of our favorites back home so um if you sign up you're in for a treat so speaking of 2020 um, I think it's only appropriate for us to talk about, you know, the year, what we did, what we're proud of, and maybe even a few goals for 2021. Yeah, sounds good. So, I mean, one of my proudest things is moving here during oh the pandemic. Oh my gosh, absolutely. <laughs> so I don't know if we ever talked about all of it, but um, I had come to Columbus, was that summer of last year? Um, to chat with a company while I was job searching. Um, you know, didn't end up working at that company, but really fell in love with Columbus, came back and told Dan, and I was like, listen, you know, a relocation expert took me around to view the different neighborhoods, um, told me, you know, she asked me, how much are you paying in rent in Boston? And I told her, and she was like, well, you can get basically a castle here. <laughs> and so I, you know, came home, did some research, and then I brought the facts to Dan. <laughs> and I think for both of us, it's about like, we love Boston and we consider it our home. Mm -hmm. And we just sort of like, let's do something different for a while. And I think being in the pandemic, living in a studio apartment, really just like lit the fire to like be like, let's do this now. Yeah. I mean, I had, you know, four to six hours of meetings, video calls every day. And Dan's trying to film in, you know, in the kitchen or on our roof deck, um, you know, with the grill. So it just didn't work. And we really wanted a fenced in yard for Frida. Um, that was our ultimate goal. Um, so we searched, we saw how great the places were, very much our style. The food scene in Columbus is also incredible. Um, so we just did it. So in 2020, um, I got my dream job, thanks to Teal, a lot of their leadership and guidance. 
Um, and I'm the influencer and talent manager at Apartment Therapy and The Kitchen, um, two companies I've followed, mainly Apartment Therapy, for, for years. Um, so it was a real dream when I, when I found out that I was selected. And it's, I'm super excited because I've been following them forever too, and it helps me in my job. And it's like related, and we're working on the same kind of things, and it's really cool and exciting. Yeah, and oddly, um, you know, some of my coworkers, most of them are in New York, um, they live in Brooklyn, um, some of them are in Boston, but the founder of the kitchen, Faith, she actually lives here in, in Columbus. So, kind of felt like it was meant to be. So, really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I guess my next thing is just like my starting streaming. Oh, yeah, that was a huge thing. It was yeah. a lot more work than I expected. It's funny because was that at the end of last year when we were at that Maverick event? Where you said that you and that was a goal? Or? It, we were just, it was after the, um, the big event that they had yes. every year. Mm -hmm. And Lyle, the founder of Maverick, was talking to me and we were talking about Switch or Twitch, Twitch. and TikTok. Yes, yes. And I said, which should you start right now kind of you know mm -hmm. and he was like you should be on tiktok yesterday yeah and you can just download tiktok and be on it mm -hmm. right so because that's what he did he was like i downloaded it <laughs> just find out what it was so i was like <laughs> cool like great and i tried and it is fun and i had some good hits on there yes you did but uh i think my content works more with twitch Oh, for sure. Like Absolutely. long form, chill, like hang out with me while I do something. But not only that, like it's more, it's less like this is something sped up and, and kind of fun. And it's more instructional and interactive. Like people are on there asking them questions. People are like, wow, thanks for taking the time to do this. And whereas TikTok is more kind of quick, quick hits. Yeah. This is like just so meaningful. It feels like you're kind of like across the kitchen island cooking with Dan. <laughs> there was Frida. Frida wants to be included. So that, that was cool and it, it, it does... <laughs> it, Sorry. It was, it's been great doing it and there was definitely a barrier to entry. Like I had to buy oh gosh, cameras yes. and figure out how it works and do all that stuff. But now that I'm up and running, it's, it's awesome. And it's worth it. All of those things are just investments in your career. So, what else for you? For me, um, I think one of the biggest things for me was, and I've said this before, was um, being so intentional about every part of my health, um, from tracking my sleep, um, what I ate, how I felt when I ate what. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of went on a more restrictive diet, taking out a lot of, um, a lot of elements that are known, uh, to be kind of bad for people with autoimmune disorders or, um, that have renal problems or kidney problems. So that was a little tough, um, but it resulted in me, um, going into remission and going off on the strongest medicines that I've been on for a long time that really just changed my entire life. Um, for the good, it obviously saved my life. For the bad, um, you know, it causes weight gain, um, insomnia, you know, it can really just change your whole personality. And I noticed it 100%. So I'm really proud of the commitment that I made. Um, to my health and um, you know I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before but um, about a year into us dating um, Dan and I I was um, I had a really serious health scare um, and I was hospitalized for a while and Dan would come and stay for hours um, and he would just sit there and I would see him and he just looked so worried um, and I realized this was like really the first time in my life beyond my parents um, where, you know, what was going on with me was truly scaring someone and, um, and really affecting them. 
And so I promised beyond all of the treatments uh, that I was taking very seriously that um, that I would look into anything and everything holistically that I could do to to get myself well. Um, and it did a lot. Um, and as of two or three weeks ago, as I got retested, I am still very much in remission, which is such a relief. Yeah. It's really awesome and it's it's amazing and we're here in Ohio in Columbus where there is a big lupus center. So yes. it's like great that you have that access to that here. Um, and also it's great that you know, you don't have to be like crazy strict on your diet. We still get pizza once we in a while. We still enjoy ourselves. And yeah. that was what was really important to me. I want to be healthy and kind of manage my disorder. But, um, you know, I, I want to live and enjoy all kinds of food and drinks. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, my next thing I would say is um, is our ability to create content together I am so excited about that because um, that brings up our one of our last projects of 2020 that yeah, which ultimately is, Dan secured <laughs> <laughs> which is with uh, Chairman's Reserve pork and well Chairman's Reserve they have beef and pork uh, we did uh, some recipes with their pork and we did a video together which I can't wait to share because it's awesome it's very much like these podcast episodes where it we is. just hang out and talk to each other <laughs> uh, so it's really cool and I'm excited for it to come out and I think it's always been our goal to work together on more of these campaigns and just content in general yeah but it's hard um, it can be you know like whereas like I was trying to focus more on like plant-based wellness and things like that and lifestyle elements Dan was in the kitchen cooking incredible comfort food so we didn't always kind of meet in that middle um but with this campaign in particular it really it drew out like a special story for us yeah for sure yeah. and i feel like don't tell them oh but you need to see the it. video <laughs> you need to see the video to, to, to hear the story <laughs> and i i think um moving here has helped us be able to work together better, oh my goodness just because yes. it's like we have the space to do it and we have the setup to do it so it's really good as part of all the things that I bought for streaming like this microphone right here <laughs> that actually is helping us do do podcast stuff together too yeah um and I think when it comes down to it at the end of the day 2020 was definitely our most challenging um you know um you know both of my parents got, who are older um were diagnosed with COVID um, my mother was in the hospital for weeks and even on a ventilator, um, you know, it, it just really didn't look great. Um, and that was a, a tough time for her, for my, for my father, for my entire family, um, and for us, you know, as a couple to, to deal with. It was a scary time. It really was. But it was, um, you know, we got, we connected with your dad a lot, bringing food down there. Yeah, Dan cooked pretty much incredible <laughs> meals every week and we we would bring them to the back porch and my dad would sit on the porch and we would sit out in the lawn um and just chat with him and know that let him know that he wasn't on his own um which you know it, it just means a lot to my family and i think it was a like a just a really great experience for us and most importantly um, we were so fortunate, um, that both my parents, uh, you know, they recovered and, um, and both of us are here. Yeah. It's been a tough year for everyone, for everything and everyone. And I think, um, you know, there is a lot of loss and that is absolutely terrible. It is. But to me, like it was is a learning moment and a growing moment for everyone and it was I'm grateful for being able to to pause for a minute yes despite the yeah. you know the terrible loss that that has happened and I'm also grateful for the situations we were in 
really forced Dan and I to have some really deep, difficult conversations that you typically wouldn't have unless you're um, maybe a little bit older or in kind of a crisis situation. And you know, that, that can be tough, but it's those tough moments that make you realize even more so that the person that you're with is is truly your life partner. Oh. <laughs> I mean it. Don't make fun. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, cheers to next year. <laughs> cheers to next year. Speaking of next year, let's share one goal for 2021. Uh, well, I mean... I think both of us agree that we really want to travel once we can. Oh gosh, yes. I can't wait. I have a long list. <laughs> <laughs> too many places on the list now. <laughs> Not never too many. Yeah. We have we are only in our thirties. We have many trips ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. God willing. Um, so travel. Number one on that travel list is uh, is Mexico City. Um, so Dan's next cookbook is very much centered around the cuisine, um, in that region. And he's very, uh, very sensitive to making sure that, you know, as a white male, he honors traditions, cuisines, um, everything about a culture before even attempting to, to create recipes. So, um, we are going to spend some time there. Do Mexico City, what a little Tulum, and we're still figuring out the third area. If there is <laughs> a third area, need to have a third place. Well, you know, like <laughs> there's like work, there's fun Tulum, yeah. and then there needs to be like a little bit of something else, like a bit of culture. Like Mexico City is going to be about the culture, but just something else, um, mm-hmm. because you know we're going to spend some time there. Yeah. Um, for me. Um, And this, again, shows growth on my side because I'm very shy and I'm very private about things um, and a bit timid about my goals sometimes. But this summer, when I was fortunate enough uh, to sign with the Lisa Eckes Group um, and have Jamie, um, a really wonderful uh, kind of talent manager and and more, um, become my agent, and we kind of both put it on our social. Um, someone reached out to them and asked uh, from a publishing house and asked if I was ever, if I'd ever thought about writing a book. Um, and honestly, the entire reason that I started my blog um, almost 12 years ago was, was to write a book. I worked every weekend on this book proposal and I've pretty much finished it. Um, so it's my goal for 2021 to put forth like the best quality. You know, I'm working right now to to go through it and edit down things and make sure what I'm putting forth is the best of me and the best of my writing um, in the hopes of, of getting a book deal. And I'm putting that out into the universe, um, not just in the hopes that I will, but in 2021, I will get a book deal. <laughs> I'm really excited for you. I am so excited too. <laughs> I'm so excited for us. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good year. It is. It's going to be a great year. In 2020, one of my biggest goals was a volume of content. Mm-hmm. Like in the past, I had, like, way back when I started, I was doing like 150, 200 recipes a year. Which is like stupid. Which is <laughs> not stupid. It's honestly insane to me because I struggled creating just five recipes. And then as time went on, you know, two years ago I did 50. Last year I did 40. And my goal this year was 52, one per week. Mm-hmm. So I hit about 55, 56. And I just, one of my goals for next year is just to keep that. that Momentum. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, 55 in 2020 is like... When we moved? When, <laughs> when we moved, like, I, when just the there pandemic, was so much going everything. on. You yeah. were cooking every week, homemade, 
pastas, soups, broths for my parents. Like when my mom got home from from the hospital, like it didn't stop. Like we would still come down and make sure that she had very specific foods that were that met her nutritional needs. Um, you know, so to, to say that you hit those goals in all that we've gone through is is honestly a miracle. Thanks. <laughs> not a miracle. I'm not saying that like, oh my God, I didn't think you could do it. It's just more that like, it shows dedication. It really does. Um, so. So to wrap up, do you? I know you like to mention what you've been watching, and I know you want to mention Bridgerton because you're just dying to mention it. Well, I love <laughs> me some Shonda Rhimes. Um, but yeah, we always talk about things that we've, you know, been listening to, watching. Um, we can't really talk about any new restaurants right now. Um, Very soon we will, though. We, we've been definitely Somewhat supporting soon. multiple times a week, um, you know, for takeout, local restaurants. Um, but Shout out to Ava's Caribbean. Ava's <sighs> Caribbean, Commune Restaurant. Like, There's so many good vegan restaurants, too, um, in Columbus. We've been so... I mean, that was part of why we moved here. We knew the food scene was incredible. Um, and beer. Also, Lox Bagels. Oh god! People are like, I'm not. I can get a good bagel in Columbus. Like, well, you can because an incredible chef is here making those bagels. And I don't have to stand in line for an hour to get it. (laughs) Oh, in JP. (laughs) Or um, or in in um, oh central or in Cambridge, there's Bagel Saurus. Bagel Saurus. Well, we never did that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. Um, you know, we've been watching Bridgerton, which is just so fun because for me, it's important now when we're looking at shows, like even more so, I mean, I've always had it in the back of my mind, but even more so this year, I've made sure that in the shows that we're watching and the movies, even in the silly, like Hallmark Christmas, Christmas movies, like I don't want to watch something where I don't feel I'm represented. You know and previously I kind of just did I just went along because I thought that was like that's all I had but this year thankfully things have shifted somewhat and you know Bridgerton is one of those things like I can finally watch something like Downton Abbey-esque and actually see people of color that aren't just brushing horses you know the queen is black and um, I mean honestly that's who else would be a queen, right? <laughs> you can cut that if you want. <laughs> Why would I, I don't want to be too controversial. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, that's what I've been watching. I've also, we, what have we watched? We also watched Riviera on the Sundance channel. We've been watching Bosch. Um, Bosch is fun. Um, I watched House of Ho on HBO Max. Um, you know, a lot of my coworkers are just so, like I work on the creative studio team and they're all just so interesting and intelligent and they always are talking about different shows. So we kind of bounce ideas and shows off each other. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I, I haven't, I kind of paused a little bit on the Mandalorian, which I'm, you know, a little sad to say, but. I'm also like a really scared, I don't like scary things. And Dan told me before, you know, the episode that I stopped, that he had read that there was, there were a lot of spiders in one. Um, I'm not going to say if that's true or not, in case you haven't watched it. There were spiders and it was very scary. Well, there we are. (laughs) And I chose to sit that one out. And I do... We're going to get you back on the train because you'll love the rest of it. I will definitely get on it, you know, and I also want to see, like, why am I so scared of scary movies? Maybe I don't need, this is not something I need to look into, but, like, I I get a lot of anxiety from scary movies. So I just, like, have decided, also in 2020, whereas I would always be like, no, we have to find, we have to watch this together. Like, I would just be like, you know, is it okay if I sit this out? And Dan's like, of course. Absolutely. I don't want you, like, being frantic over show, you know? No. So, um, so I set those boundaries, 
but I would like to further explore like kind of what makes me so scared about something on a screen that's especially not happening in my real life <laughs> especially <laughs> because I've seen you watch extremely scary things yes, and be absolutely. fine absolutely well, it depends on the you scary have a thing. Very Wait, what scary thing did I watch? Type yes. of thing that scares you. I have a very specific type hard. of everything. <laughs> Let's be to, clear, yeah. It's like. hard to figure out what makes you scared. And we could watch a show that I find scary, and we'll watch two episodes of it, and then one day you'll go, "I'm scared of this now, mm-hmm. and I'm done with it." <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, number one, you know, spiders. Last night. I was like brushing my teeth and I was like, Dan, come here. I like peek my head out of the bathroom down the hallway. I'm like, Dan, can you come here? And he like comes over. He's like, what? I'm like, look. (laughs) (laughs) It's a big old spider in the corner of the ceiling. Um, Honestly, I'm not proud of how I react to spiders. (laughs) We can cut that. (laughs) If you will. Um, You've also been playing The Sims. I have been playing The Sims. I play Animal Crossing with like my close girl group, um, my SG girls, who I love so much. Um, but I have been playing The Sims a bit too. And I've been playing Fuser, which is a game where you're a DJ, and I want her to start playing it. Yes. So here's the thing. I loved Guitar Hero growing up, and Dan knew that. And then he saw this game, and he was like, this is... This is the game for for Georgina, and I and I was like, wow, he's right, you know. And so when we when we opened up the game, he was like, why don't you give it a try? And I'm just like, Ugh. like when I play games, I like to kind of be led into things. I like it to be somewhat easy, um, just like when I'm reading fiction for fun, you know, because I feel like I'm always so on having to figure things out all the time for work um, that I just want things to be kind of made easy. And You just like to grab a controller and go, which is fair. Exactly. And a lot of the time, like, Dan, like, will kind of figure out some things for me. You do. And I really appreciate that. And so for this one, I I was just kind of like, oh, I don't know. It was a little bit more complicated. So I haven't given it a chance. But I did sit watching you play, and it was really great. Maybe it was, I think it was only great because he incorporated Lady Gaga into every mix. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she's watching, I better. Lady Gaga, me ghost. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, so I hope everyone has a good New Year's. Yes. And had a good holiday season. And uh, we are excited to continue doing this into next year. We are. And if, you know, if you are one of the people that is, you know, is quarantining by themselves, like, we want you to know that, like, even if you don't feel like 2020 was your year, we're thinking of you. We are here for you. um, And we are rooting for a much better 2021 for you. Those that lost family members, um, those who have frontline workers in their family, those that are frontline workers, um, and more. We are so grateful for everything um, people are doing to keep others safe. So, uh, with that said, thank you for thank you for watching us. Um, We only hope to continue to provide useful information um, and somewhat entertaining in 2021. (laughs) So thank you. Cheers. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Yes. Tell me what you're drinking today. You're supposed to drink after you cheers. Okay. (laughs) I don't make the rules. (laughs) We're doing that one more time just in case that goof. That blooper wasn't good. <laughs>